fans and welcome to another episode of Silver Screams Reacts. Tonight, we are taking a look at the trailer for the next Five Nights at Freddy's game, which is called Sister Location. I am excited and also kind of terrified because I... This is all my fault. I was gonna getting say... Getting her into this. This well, is my fault. I will be honest, I don't have the same attachment to this franchise that you do. I enjoy watching the, the Markiplier videos to an extent, but I didn't start really appreciating the lore until Game Theory did their videos on the Five Nights at Freddy's series. But even so, I feel like I'm more removed from it than you are. Well, I always go into stuff like this head first anyway, which is why when it's the rare horror franchise that catches my attention, I don't sleep at night. <laughs> so which soon I was so proud of her when she started liking a horror thing. <laughs> so one and two fucked me up, but good. And three yep. I actually watched while I was at a conference in Vegas on extremely spotty Wi-Fi, so it took, you know, half an hour to watch a 14 minute and video. And by, by watch you mean you're Markiplier. watching Let's Plays. Yeah, watch it. I got through these via Markiplier because there's no way I would have gotten through them alone the first time. I love working at Disney World. Disney World. <laughs> Disney World. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why isn't that button working? Yeah. So, <laughs> Let's Players have been what got me through this. And Scott Cawthon doesn't know how to stop. For better or so, worse. For worse was definitely FNAF World. So now we have Sister Location Trailer 1, and we are gonna do the thing. So back to form for Scott, uh, supposedly. Let's let's see how this goes. Let's see how this goes. Wow, that looks familiar. Fear. Panic. Dread. Oh. What was that an elevator? Can you move now? Oh, they sure can. What is with this deep below ground? What is with the face plates? Ah! Where memories? Ready? I don't really like that articulation. Angry is restless. I feel like we're gonna get some predator style. Yeah. Space and secrets don't keep. Yeah, it's like an That's a creepy melody. Oh, he's got a funny puppet. I don't know what that's Yeah, said. did anybody get the, the whispering words? I'm gonna see if the comments have something, because usually the comments are The comments are pretty good, good about, about again, the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom is really good about picking apart the lore and theorizing. Um, on the one hand, the- At this point, most of the comments are just saying, Matt Pat's gonna go insane. Oh, yeah, <laughs> poor, poor Matt. Oh, Lord. Now, I'm conflicted because I I feel like there's a lot of good stuff in the Five Nights at Freddy's lore, and I do very much appreciate the less is more approach to storytelling, where it's just enough pieces to really put together the story, but not it's not spoon fed to you. Yeah. So it's it's one of those things where I can really appreciate it for that one. But on the other hand, there have been a lot of Five Nights at Freddy's games to come out in the span of four a year and, and, and a half. half. God, yes, four and a spinoff. Which and the thing is, one was so well, impressive. Five and a spinoff, if you want to count FNAF World. Oh right, FNAF. No, Five Nights at Freddy's four. Yeah, four yeah. and a spinoff, and then FNAF World, and then this one. 
I'm counting this one. Oh, I'm not yet. Okay. But, like, I'm just saying, this is a thing that's happening, because it says fall, we're gonna get it next in month. In a couple weeks. Yeah, <laughs> couple next weeks. month. Scott does not know how to stop. I would like to think that he learned his lesson with uh, FNAF World, because, boy, was that a hot mess. Now it was also a huge departure from form. It was different, and I don't know if people, I, I'll be honest, I didn't really look into it a whole mu bunch because they pulled it so quickly. Oh, yeah. I, I just, was it broken? What was it the was problem? It was very broken. Okay. There were no tutorials, there were no instructions on how to do things, there was no, it was kind of following your basic turn-based RPG, world yeah. RPG, but it's not, it was not crafted well enough. To really tell you, because you know, for most of your RPGs, you have okay, this one has these are status effect kind of moves, and these are these kind of moves, and when you do this, it's color coded for this, and this is how it works, and you have a time bar. Like you, your first battle is a tutorial to put you through. You know, this is how you catch Pokemon. This is how you use a limit break. This is how you whatever. It never had any of that, and the whole thing played like it was at one point five speed. Like it was manic. Huh. And, you know, also broken as hell in some places. There were places that severely needed patches, and it just... Meh. So FNAF World was very much a departure from form, released way too early with not nearly enough beta testing. So it just... it was a problem. Most of the other Five Nights at Freddy's games, if it wasn't a one-man band on that, which I think it was for all of them, which is actually really impressive. It is. Look at all it's very them. impressive. And... FNAF 1 takes up less space than the original Myst game, which fit on a three and a half floppy disk. It's all still images and sound files, with the exception of a gif of Foxy running down the hall. It's all stills and sounds. Which, again, and that's how very, the game plays. It's very crazy. impressive. Uh, very it, good it's, resource management. It's like the Paranormal Activity movies before they got, although at this point now, like the paranormal activities. It's a, a franchise that thrives on minimalism, and when you throw too much at it, like Five Nights at Freddy 2 tried to do, um, something gets lost. And so, on the one hand, I think this looks like, if we're talking about taking FNAF World into context, this looks like a nice return to form, but... I also suffer from something called franchise fatigue, which I don't know if that's an actual term, but I'm going to start using it. Um, I, I would not be surprised if it is. I, yeah, but I'm going to start using it because this is so many... The, again, it's the same problem with a horror movie franchise that wants to put out a new movie every single year to milk it for all it's worth, and I don't think that this is a... This doesn't <laughs> seem like a creative decision on Scott's part like the first game was. The first game, I feel like, when did that even come out? Was it August? July, something like that, August, yeah. Something like that? And I remember the second game coming out at the beginning of November because it was NaNoWriMo and I scared myself half to death driving to a write-in in the dark after watching wah, wah. Yeah, no, don't even start. <laughs> I, just, I remember this. And it led to some of the best writing I have ever done because therapy writing is actually really good in my terms. So there was that. Third game would have been in March, because that was when I was in Vegas. And fourth, fourth game, game was not too long after that, and that was earlier this year. And FNAF World came out two months ago, don't even know. It was such a flash in the pan, I barely remember. No. It, it was in March that. last year. Yeah. FNAF World was earlier this year at some point, I believe. And now we have this one. So he's kind of slowing down between release schedules, but he still can't yes, keep to a date. But, and it's, he's too eager. I don't know if it's him being too eager or the cash cow that this is being too eager. Or, like, just the need to keep the franchise alive because the internet has the attention span of a gnat. Uh, the internet is still buying FNAF merchandise, which he gets a cut of because of the contract. He does. But again... This doesn't seem like a creative choice. This seems more like a merchandising decision, which is where problems start to arise in any given franchise is when merchandising and 
the bottom line start making the decisions rather than creative choices. So I I don't know. This this looks interesting, and Scott does again. He, he's he makes some he's a damn impressive model. He does. He he makes some really interesting things. But I'm still like. When it comes to, I don't know how much you can actually milk this before I stop caring. Well, here's the thing. For one, I don't think it's merchandise driven, and that's not something I can discuss on camera. Um, it might be because, yes, he's realized he has a good thing. He might still have ideas. It might just be that sort of thing where the franchise should have stopped, but you still keep having ideas, and so it's still going. But the other thing is there have been so many spin-off games. We've had Five Nights at Candy's 1 and 2, I think, at this point. We've had One Night at Flumpty's. We've had Five Nights at the Krusty Krab. We've had Five Nights at Treasure Island. We've had, and there are some, that's just the ones that I know off the top of my head. And some of them, um, Candy's and Flumpty's actually, are extremely well constructed different visual styles, different animation styles, but very well done as games. And some of them are just kind of like, you do it, you put a cheap skin on it, you go. But there have been so many different spin-off games using the same or similar mechanics that are so well done that it doesn't make sense for him to stop when there is still very much obviously a market for these games of this type that he's made so popular. So if he's going to take a lateral leap here and make a sister location, God knows what the lore is going to be, but we have new animatronics with what will probably be new rules. Similar gameplay, different enough to keep it fresh, hopefully not the complicated mess that 2 and 4 were. So I can understand these decisions. I am interested to see how this plays out. I'm not going to sit here and be like, yeah, well, but I'll be like, I will hmm. say that I have... A, you know, more faith in something from the creator himself um, than something like, I mean, we had a book released and we had a movie. The book was that's, also written by him. Well, it was co-written by him. Yes. I haven't read. I haven't read it either. But we got a, it's a fun little AU. Uh, yeah, exactly. I I haven't read the book, but we've also got the movie coming out. Who knows when? So it's just, in my mind, it's just like, again, cash cow, cash cow, cash cow. We're going to milk it for all it's worth. I would love to be proven wrong. I would love to look at this next game and go, wow, this is, you know, this is what it's all about. So I'm, I'm hoping that's what this is. I'm in for the game. I have not yet read the book. I feel like I should see if I can find it on the library's ebook thing. I don't know. I need to find it somewhere. Not pirate it. Rent. Yes. And I'm still waiting for the movie. I will yeah. hang out and see how this movie thing goes. I will be intrigued because stigma of video game movies. Well, not we'll just see. that, because Five Nights at Freddy, you know, it's the jump scares that make watching Let's Players a lot of fun, but it's the lore that people are interested in. And I'm, I, given the amount of horror movies I watch, I will be the first person to say how annoying jump scares are. Because uh, I think somebody put it that they are the fart joke equivalent to comedy. Um, you know, it's the yeah. easiest, laziest thing that you can do. And on the surface, having an entire game franchise based around nothing but jump scares is extremely lazy, but it's that lore that keeps people coming back, that keeps people interested, that keeps people having these discussions. So that's what I'm attracted to when it comes to this stuff. Um, but again, I'm not as invested as a lot of other people are in this lore because of that merchandising disconnect and because of the the jump scare on the surface, blah, 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 this is what I'll we're doing. I'll be interested to see how they do that as a movie because, yeah, the game is based a lot on jump scares, but what you don't see is after they get into the office, drag you bodily into the spare parts thing and shove you into this suit. Like, the jump scare is where your gameplay ends, but that's not the end for the character you're playing. All you see is the game over screen with presumably your eyeballs coming out of a Freddy suit. So, 
there's more to this. That's and if true. they play it as this is someone who's not just going to stay in the office, this is someone who's going to investigate. Maybe someone else has broken into this on a night where there's no security, or they meet. <laughs> or they meet. That would be so funny. Or they break in, security sees them on the cameras and has to guide them through and be like, no, you need to stay out of here, they're coming that way. There are many, many ways to play this as a movie when you are not limited to, again, a couple of GIFs, a whole bunch of still images, and audio files, because that's what the original was. It was made to be a very small, very simple game that took off. And so it took everyone by surprise. Depending on how they frame it as a movie, depending on what lore they go with, depending on whether they go the happy little AU route that they did with the book, there are so many other ways to do it that aren't just, you are the player, you are here. And that's where a lot of video game movies well, fail. And again, the, the, the beauty of, you know, games one through three are that they put you in the protagonist's shoes and you can't run away. It, you can't fight back. Literally, all you can do is sit here and try to outmaneuver these things that are coming for you. And that is a very interesting dynamic to try to capture on the big screen. See, what I'd love to do is... Now I'm stuck on this. Someone breaks in, like the idiot kids break into the old Chuck E. Cheese's or yeah. whatever. Like, you know, that kind of thing, thinking, oh, you know, we're going to go fuck around in the ball pit after hours. It's going to be fun, whatever. We're stupid kids. And then it turns out they're in this very dangerous situation. I'd love it if we never saw the security guard, but we heard him die. You know what? I, I would love that. Two thirds of the way through the movie, they hear the security guard get killed and they're like, we are on our own. I would love for, I'd you know, down. I would love to hear, you Poor know, guy. <laughs> I would love to hear phone guy and again, have that realization of, oh shit, this is a pre-recorded message far later into the movie than you would anticipate. Like, I, I would love, love, love that reveal of just like, I had no idea that this was a pre-recorded message of somebody who just, who died and that we don't know how long this message has been on repeat or whatever. Um, oh, anyway. I, I love actual live security trying to guide them through and they uh, and they getting killed. killed for their efforts. I just no one week it's... away from retirement. <laughs> just one week. Um, Anyway, we, we've talked about this. We are way off topic for a sister location trip. Yeah, again, we, we're talking about like movie and what we want for the movie. I could talk about this franchise for a while. She can. I probably should do a video on it. You Just should. Just talking. Because you can. <laughs> a lot. All uh, for, for those of you guys who, who only see us here, I talk her ear off about horror stuff all the time. And then she started talking my ear off about Five Nights at Freddy. I was like... You liked a horror thing. And now Yay. she regrets everything. Now I'm like, oh, you <laughs> like a horror thing. Mm. No. <laughs> you know, I will say I had the exact same reaction when you started liking Fred. Um, like when you started liking Scream. Because that was like a, you like a horror thing. I can finally share this thing I love with someone. You know, because again, I love horror and I feel like horror should bring us all together. I don't handle it very well. <laughs> anyway, um, this is going to be interesting. That's the long and short of this video is we'll see if Scott can pull it off again. He is a talented guy. I feel like he has the chops to pull it off when he puts in the effort and when he puts in the time. Matt Pat's going to lose his mind. Poor Matt. I cannot wait to see how Markiplier tackles this. Mr. King of Five Nights at Freddy's. I am the king of <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. Crown for sale, crown for sale. I'm buying that crown back. <laughs> so yes. Yes. Katie, where can people go if they want to keep up with you? On Twitter at Kiaxet, K-I-A-X-E-T. And you guys can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the Mangwin. That's T-H-E-M-E-N-G-E-U-I-N. Be sure to follow Silver Screams on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. That's Silver underscore Screams. Uh, yeah, we have more stuff coming. Let us know what you thought about the trailer and what you would like to see from a Five Nights at Freddy's movie because it's happening. Also, let us know what your favorite animatronic is and why. Let's see how this goes. Hmm. What about you? Hmm. I'm fond of the mangle. Mangles? I am particularly Unique. fond of Murder Ceiling Foxy with the AOL dial-up voice. I know I which one it. I like best. 
Spring trap? Spring trap. Yeah, you would. What? <laughs> you what? would. What? It's... Because that's the most horror movie out of all of them. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway. again, it's the horror. It's the horror game one. It's the... Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you all so, so much for watching. We will see you all next time.